Right now, Syria is in the middle of a civil war. A conflict that has spouted from an extreme division between the Assad regime currently holding office and Syrian opposition rebels. The influx of refugees fleeing Syria, which has been more than 4 million since the crisis began on March 15, 2011, has been caused by the extreme violent conflict between rebels, the Assad regime, and more recently religious fundamentalist groups like ISIS within the region. By learning about current Western involvement as this conflict progresses and as more Syrians are displaced, we may become more sympathetic, helpful, and enlightened by the fact that currently, transnational Syrian refugees are arguably some of the most vulnerable global citizens in the world. The Syria humanitarian crisis is the defining humanitarian crisis of this century. What do you want is a natural springboard for selling the sponsor's product. It's impossible. Ask a baby not to cry. A negligence to understand the situation of many Syrian refugees permits a xenophobic and Islamophobic attitude towards those that are fleeing both the Assad regime, who has long abused the use of chemical weapons despite international law, and ISIS, who during the civil war has blockaded civilians, starved them, and denied them basic human rights. In 2011, the Obama administration announced that it would be accepting 10,000 Syrian refugees. We want to take in 200,000 Syrians, right? What do you want? Despite this promise, however, the U.S. currently has only accepted less than 2,000. This is most likely due to an expansive and unnecessarily thorough program to screen refugees. In the U.S., Syrian refugees face what the United States Department of Homeland Security calls a security screening process that is more thorough than any other for people entering this country. Despite this, at least 31 American governors have issued statements that they will deny Syrian refugees in the wake of recent terror attacks in Paris on November 14, 2015, despite the fact that ISIS has claimed responsibility for them. As many politicians in a Republican-led Congress continue to perpetuate and fearmonger communities into denying refugees, programs to accept refugees have become more narrow than ever before. At a minimal level, this is an extremely exhaustive two-year process that is barely feasible for most Syrian refugees fleeing conflict. In order to confirm that the applicant poses no threat to national security, refugees must go through the following lengthy process. Five background checks, three interviews, three screenings, one contagious disease screening, cultural orientation classes, approval from the United Nations, U.S. Immigration Headquarters, Homeland Security, the Director of the FBI, the Homeland Security Secretary, and the Director of National Intelligence. Additionally, applicants can be called in for more interviews and background checks, despite the ones that they have already taken, and, at that point, can still be denied access to a country. Politicians, as well as American civilians, display a misconstrued notion that the conflict in Syria, as well as penetrations of ISIS into the Middle East, is somehow the fault of Syrian civilians seeking asylum. To fleeing Syrians, it appears the United States extends their definition of threat to those that are truly fleeing internationally dangerous threats. Furthermore, many Americans estrange refugees by their religion. Of a theocratic and political movement like radical Islamism, that promotes murdering anyone who doesn't share your extreme faith. Have you done everything in your power to explore alternatives other than resettlement here? And they could be, listen, they could be ISIS. I don't know. The lack of U.S. involvement in this surging crisis is negligent of extremely significant international crises. To combat the status quo, U.S. policies should extend their protection to the most vulnerable of global citizens and outsource their help to both the U.N. High Commissioner of Refugees and EU countries that are managing the largest influx of refugees. They are parents, they are children, they are orphans, and so we have to, each of us, do our part. I'm putting the people on notice that are coming here from Syria that if I win, if I win, they're going back. They're going back. I'm telling you. <laughs>